And also, oh, New York Jets tight end CJ Uzama. Oh my god, I literally went pass out. <gasps> Woo! Fake the handoff, bootleg. Wilson sets, he throws, he's got his man, caught, touchdown, breaking away, CJ Uzama. Oh, not one but two touchdowns showing off against the Lions. They also, um, I mean, yeah, that's his first two touchdowns as a Jet, by the way, an eight-year NFL vet. I believe soccer fan, maybe a fake soccer fan, like 99% of Americans are during the World Cup. A Broadway producer, welcome, CJ Uzama. Oh, no, CJ, I can't fan. hear you. Hold on, my earpiece is out. Hold oh, my on. gosh. I literally can't hear you. I, I heard that happen while it was happening. Oh no, CJ. Maybe you could sing for us, Broadway star. Hold on, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. CJ, don't say bad things about me while I'm doing this. No, no, I'm not. No, nothing bad. Nothing bad. You can't hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, okay. What if I just left and I was like, CJ, you do something for 10 minutes? Wow. Flustered. Uh, Listen here, CJ Uzama, congratulations on these touchdowns, on your career. New York looks like it suits you. Do you like New York? I do. I do. Um, it's, it was a bit of a, an adjustment early, but it's been fun. What's the best and worst part of living in New York City or near New York City? The traffic is pretty just abysmal. Um, the best, the food. The food's amazing. Okay, give me the, give me the best you know. spot. Give me the best food you've had in Manhattan. Oh, man. So I, I love this place called La Bairdin. It's a French restaurant. Okay. Yeah, it's fancy. Um, fancy, no, CJ. No, no, no. It's, not, it's not a, no, this isn't a fan. This is, this is like during the World Cup, they were, uh, they were having World Cup parties. It's a, it's a nice little, it's a nice spot. It's not, it's not fancy by any stretch of imagination. How many um, Michelin stars? I mean, I would give it three, but I think statistically zero. I'm surprised you eat anything outside those juices you're always talking about on Instagram. I feel like you don't, you're on like a forever liquid diet. Those, no, those juices, they, they've evaded me this year. Um, I've been strictly just like water and Gatorade, I think. Uh, <laughs> and, and actually, this is going to be bad because the boys, the boys make fun of me a lot for this. Tell me. I have a lot of syrup for breakfast. And so they call me Buddy and I don't love it. Um, but it's Christmas time, so I'll, I'll kind of embrace that one right Didn't now. Didn't you dress up as Buddy one time? Last year. Is that creepy that I know that? I think I remember you walking in and I had never seen the movie and you were making fun of me on Twitter for never having understood that you put syrup on pasta, right? Right. Please tell me you've seen it. No. What? what are we, yeah. But what, I did see that Carrie Washington tweet or somebody who tweeted yesterday that they, they saw it and it was like a joy and I should watch it because it makes you smile. I'm not like a big Will Ferrell gal. <gasps> It's fine. It's fine. I'm a Ryan Reynolds guy. Will Ferrell is... He, oh Look my at gosh, you. Look at what do you have in Will your hand there? I have a bag of spaghetti with syrup, chocolate sauce, and Pop-Tarts. Standard. So what did, uh, are you dressing up for the Thursday night's game? I might be. <gasps> what I'm are you going to wear? Tell us. Give us a hint. Let us play, let's play a game. 20 questions. Well, it's, it's up in the air between two things. Because I'm dressing Mike White. Um, because he lost a bet. So don't bet me because... We, I bet things that are going to be embarrassing. Okay. Um, but can I, know what the, can I know what the bet was? Uh, it was just Auburn. I mean, it was just an Auburn, oh. West, Western Kentucky. We were either going to do push-ups or do I got to dress him. Oh. And seeing how you're not, you kind of struggled with push-ups, I was like, we'll just go the outfit, the outfit route. I'm kidding. You killed it. You did well. You did well. That was a joke. Small joke. Wow. 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 This is deteriorating quickly, guys. <laughs> Can we get the shepherd's hook and unplug the thing for our friend CJ Uzama? Um, okay. So you're, so wait, so what are you dressing up as? Tell, tell me. I need to know everything. Um, I think that I'm going to dress up as Nightmare Before Christmas, um, Jack Skeleton. <laughs> Okay, that's that's aggressive. You think I like that you're like, I think I am. You like have everything ready to go. It's like two days away. I'm well, thinking about it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. It's between it's between that and something else, but we'll see. Okay, so you're in New York and I'm talking I'm, I'm reading the New York Post and I find this. You 
have taken a huge pivotal role in something really important. That's why I actually asked you to come on the show. Um, your involvement with the Broadway show Ain't No More at the Belasco Theater in New York City. Tell me about why you got involved and what inspired you. Yeah, well, I'm I'm a huge. I love theater. I love Broadway. I love plays and musicals. And um, last year during the Super Bowl, I was able to meet with some of the guys and. Um, in the media department for my agency and you know they said if anything ever comes on their desk they'd they'd uh, present it to me and this hap just so happened to get presented to them and um i was one of the first people they called when when they you know thought about getting somebody else involved um and i just thought you know one it's it's an awesome opportunity for me because i love theater so much but two just the message that it stands for um because you know it's it's um it's lee daniels it's jordan e. cooper who is phenomenal like absolutely phenomenal um and then just i mean the cast is amazing it's it was something that really kind of hit hit me um when i read the script and you know i kind of immediately called my financial guy and was like i have to do this i don't i don't really care about what it's going to take I, I really want to be a part of this i mean and, and you're not the only one but it clearly spoke to you and Bro broadway in general is struggling and this is a a, a big production with a really beautiful meaning and important thing to see and it was going to get shelved quickly and then you came along not just you because it's been all over the news lately with recently really influential people like your tyler perry shonda rhimes Dwayne wade many others showing their support your teammates mike f and white came to the show with you uh what was that like and how can people out there help support ain't no more yeah um just one they can support by buying tickets and, and showing up to the show um but yeah no it that was to me amazing um, that I was able to get you know my teammates to come along. Um, Zach was also there. Um, we had some other guys that weren't pictured that were there too, and that that to me was special, uh, especially because you know we're we're going through the season and you know it's it's a trek to get down to the city, especially with the traffic. Said forty five minutes took us like an hour and a half to get there, and um, so them to bring their significant others and, and to show up and support. They really meant the world to me, um, and then they loved it. You know, they were like, "Wow, this is this is great. It's hilarious." Um, and we really had a good time. So it meant the world to me, um, and and it means the world to me that you know my teammates shoot in the locker room. The guys that weren't there, they were like, "Dude, can can I go? Like, how do how do I get involved with this? Like, can I? What's what's the deal?" So it's it's gotten uh, good reviews, and, and my teammates are obviously excited to, to help support. I love that, a co-producer on a Broadway show. I did not see it coming, but it very suits you, it suits New York, and who knows, maybe that's what your future might be uh, if you get pulled into that. I know like Victor Cruz, obviously, New York w wins a Super Bowl in that area, loves Broadway, wants to do a play, wants to do all these things, uh, and it's very cool to see. Um, and even like Nate Burleson, who I sat next to, as you know, for six years, loved the arts, the theater, wanted to get involved as well. So you just stepping up and doing this, I thought, was very cool. See, look, I said a nice thing. So nice. <laughs> Let's talk about these touchdowns. Uh, they were incredible. I was so excited to see it. Two against the Lions. And then I thought, this is the first time he's had two touchdowns because that was kind of like exciting. And it's not. You had, did it twice last year. Twice last year, you had double score games. Uh, last year, one of those games was against which team? The Jaguars? Yep. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. So for, to put this in Broadway terms, you take on the Jags tomorrow night. Can we expect an encore performance, CJ? I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> can't, give, can't give the game plan. No, I, we'll see. Um, you know, it's, it's a really good defense. We'll, uh, we'll see how we match up against them. And, you know, the short, the short weeks, the short weeks are always, you know, you're getting in as much as you can in such, such a short amount of time. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll have something, something in line for me. Well, those two touchdowns came from Zach Wilson. Okay, he looked good. He looked great. Over 300 yards. He looked competent in his return. Um, what is one thing that you have seen in Zach Wilson? Give me one specific thing over the past month that you've sort of looked at and said, this is how he's grown or evolved. Yeah, I think, I think it was kind of a humbling thing for him, right? I think, you know, I think people forget he's young. Um, well, I forget he's young because I guess I'm old now. Um, but I think, you know, for him, he took a step back. He really um, just started make, going through his progressions and making his reads. And, and you can see it in practice, right? You think, um, you know, during, during a game plan week, 
you expect a certain thing to happen, especially, you know, kind of going against the scout team saying, hey, this is how they should play it, X, Y, Z, whatever. And he kind of sometimes would be like, okay, nice. This should be here. I'm going to throw it, you know, to this receiver. And over the past month, he's really just been making his his reads. And like, you know, wow, the scout team didn't play it this way. Maybe, maybe we thought they were going to play something a certain way and they're not. And so he's really just going through his progressions, making the right reads, um, still able to extend the plays and, and just be smart with the ball. And, and you can see it in practice. And, um, yeah, like you said, I think that he played a really, you know, he played a good game, um, you know, especially with his first game back. So what's your role in that? Because I always, I think of you in that, on that team, and you are an OG, you're the vet there, but it's also your first year there. You're coming from the Bengals. So is it, how do you manage that when you go into a locker room and you're, people are obviously looking towards you, towards you for advice or leadership, or like, are you the leader in that locker room even though you've only been there? You're like, what's your role in all this? Because you can say it however you want. I know you like Mike F. and White. I know you love Zach Wilson too. Managing that has to be difficult and awkward. It just has to be. Yeah, I think the thing that I tell the younger guys I mean, I, I really just go up to the receivers, running backs, and, and the tight ends. Um, and all, all of my message to them is, it does like, we have to make plays. And, you know, I, I think being in New York has taught me one thing, and that's the media is, is reckless. You know, like, they, they, they find one person to target, and it's the quarterback, and they just they go in, and they just don't stop. So, um, you know, I, I think what, the only thing I say to everyone is no matter where the ball is, no matter what's going on, no matter what the coverage is, no matter what the play call is, we have to make plays. We have to go out there. We have to execute at the best of our abilities and, and get separation, make a contested catch, whatever it is, go in and block and dig out, you know, a, a safety, a cover three safety who might be in the box that, you know, to, to spring a bigger run. Whatever, whatever it is, we have to be, you know, we have to be on our yeah. crap. So we, we, you know, you know, so that we can help the team in any way we can. And, I think the guys are buying into that. The young guys are for sure. Garrett Wilson certainly is. He's he's fired up every. Wait, you have all well. these young kids. You've got Elijah, who's like, I don't want to be around. And then you have Garrett. I've met Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's a character. He is a character. So you're having to manage that. Does Salah sort of look at you and say, "Help me out here," or or you know, because Salah has to deserve a ton of credit for what's going on with his team. Yeah. No. I'm I love Coach Salah. I said it earlier in this week um, to, to our media team. I love him. He Why? he rides for us. He fights for us. He's he's awesome. Um, what does yeah, that mean? No, he I fights think... for you. Stop right there. He fights for you. And like, I fought for my team to get a beverage machine. Is that what? And we got one today. Woo! Did, did, we got a new coffee maker. It's very exciting. What what do you mean he fights for you? No, I, I think just with in terms of media, he fights for us. He he kind of puts everything on himself, no matter what. Um, during the game, he is fired up. Uh, I don't know if the camera's ever on him, but this man, first of all, he's kind of a, like, he's a, he's an intimidating human. Oh, I know. Right? Yeah. So, so him, him yelling at refs, I'm like, all right, like, boys, we gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get this together. We gotta get, get going. So, yeah, that's what I mean. I think for the, for the most part, the media aspect of it is like, hey, just deflect everything yeah. to me. I, I'll handle all of this. I know they're going to come at you and try to force force your hand. Don't say anything. Just say, talk to Kursal. Like, I, I got this. I can handle them. And and then on the field, seeing him fired up gets everybody <laughs> fired up. He pushed the crap out of me after my first touchdown. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's so room. funny because that it's like him and Vrabel have that where it's like they're on the field. They're doing the drills. And then you have Mike McDaniel down in uh, down in Miami. And he's the players love him, too. So there's not one way that's more right than the other as far as like reaching your players as a coach. But I do think he deserves credit. Now, Joe Hayden was on the show uh, right before you hopped on. And he we we're talking about the Jets chances. And he said that there's the you know, the question is, can Zach lead this team to the playoffs? So I ask you to help me say yes. Is there a moment or something that you can point to that shows that in a critical time, he's got it and he can make it happen? Yeah, I mean, shoot, I think the, the drive that we had, you know, to to give me the other touchdown that I had to, to put us in a position to win, to, you know, have our defense go back out there who – to me, is one of the best defenses. I mean, I go against them every every week. I'm going to say they're the best defense in the NFL. Yeah. Um, and and to kind of put put it on them and say, hey, we we got this. We know that you're going to go out there and do your thing. And I think just him having that composure in of itself was was huge. Um, him in the two minute drive was was big. You know, we got a sack and 
you know, the first play you, you don't want to sack, but then to be able to make plays, to scramble to the right, throw back to the middle of the field to E more and, and, you know, again, put us in a position to tie the game to go to overtime. I think that's huge. You know, I think yeah. that's huge for the confidence. I think that's huge for us as a team, knowing that, again, when push comes to shove, in our minds, we are going to win the game when it gets down late in the fourth quarter. And so I think that's kind of why that one stung a little bit because it was, you know, a close game in the fourth quarter and we didn't get it done. But after that game, coming in on Monday in a short week, we're like, we could have won that game easily. We, we still have our swagger. We still have our confidence. We can come in here on Thursday and, and do what needs to be done to put ourselves in a position to, for the little girl to have her pony, I think is what she said. <laughs> I mean, we're listening. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I want it to happen for you. I mean, you were part of a magical thing here. Last, you know, you spent seven years here, my friend. I spoke to Logan Wilson and uh, uh, T. Higgins over the past month or so, and I asked them both, what is the defining thing of this Bengals squad? And I thought of you because I think you were really foundational in putting it to, uh, into being what it is. And the word that they use was unselfishness. The reason they're successful is because they're unselfish. So I ask you, if, what is the word that defines this Jets team and their success? I would say relentless. Um, you know, I think, you know, to a T, to position by position, I mean, I have our defense up a lot because our defense is, is really good. Um, but I, I think, you know, as you go offense, defense, special teams, we are relentless. We're a relentless crew. Um, and and you, you look and, you know, I, I love looking at our receivers because, like you said, G is a character. E is a character. I'm starting to I'm starting to pull that character out of E where he's having a good time. He's having fun. He's playing loose. Yeah. Uh, MC is a character. All offensive line. We got some characters on the offensive line. Nate Her Herbie is hilarious. <laughs> um, and then you got the tight ends. Like the tight ends, the best position on the field. So you know we've got some some swagger about us. But yeah, I think you know we're just relentless. No matter what it is, no matter what the situation is in the game, we are going 100 percent all out. Doesn't matter what the conditions are. Um, doesn't matter that, you know, this game, it's like a 100% chance of rain with 40 mile per hour winds. We don't care. We're like, all right, cool, lay it on us. We're, we're, we're going to give it our all. We're going to yeah. go into the last whistle. So. And you don't yeah, care what those the, those idiot, those ding-dongs like Craig Carton are saying on WFAN or wherever they're saying. We don't care, we have to say. And don't read those back pages. Listen, the New York Post isn't always right. <laughs> yeah, they are. You, you can't listen to everything you read. I will say this, though, just quickly as we say bye to you. Um, my niece in Chicago, Natalia, she's a like two, one, one years old. Uh, she, I get a text every morning because she loves me. She's pointing at me, whatever. And my sister just sent me a text and goes, uh-oh, move over. Are you... He, uh, she's got a crush, and my, my little niece keeps pointing at you on the TV. CJ, you've got these Adams girls. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. She loves you. Okay. What's her name? Her name's Natalia. Natalia. Hello, Natalia. Oh, God, here we go. Baby's first crush. Uh, CJ, uh, kick ass tomorrow. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Why, yeah, go. Uh, why don't you go swimming today? <laughs> oh, bye, oh, man, <laughs> CJ. Bye, CJ, and bye, bye, Mike. Trainer Mike, I'm in trouble. All right, we're only back with a different Mike, a Mike Raffensperger, who signs my checks. <laughs>